Hello, my name is Eric Normand, and I teach Clojure, and one of my students asked me to do a code review, and he kind of got stuck working on a Roman numeral kata, and so he wants some help moving forward. And the reason he got stuck is he started trying to use uh, mutable state because the examples he were lo was looking at seem to use mutable state. So this is a Java example of the solution to the um, Roman numerals kata. And I've looked over the code and I get the idea. Uh, I've read this code and I've also seen his code which is sort of stuck in this place where he's got all the numbers 1 through 10 working but he wants all the tests are running but he wants to remove duplication because obviously when you get to something like 500 you could have a lot of duplication here you can't just write all the numbers 1 to 500 um, so because it's TDD and I think there's something to the flow of TDD and I don't just want to copy this solution in the Java world I'm actually gonna start this over this whole TDD flow so I'm gonna comment out all of these lines using my handy Emacs comment function and this is gonna run the tests okay so we have the one test and I'm just gonna delete the whole I, I left one test running because uh, that's the first one that I want to start with alright so this is our test runner it runs automatically and every time I save the file it'll run so this will show us uh, everything we need in terms of that alright so the first one is always easy because you don't have to pass anything else we have zero failure so let me uncomment the next one save it and it should fail alright so the simplest thing to do is just check if it's equal to 2 then we're gonna do that right okay and now of course we're gonna uncomment this then we have equal to 3 so of course we, we, we need to pass this test as easily as we can right now so let's do that So now we have this case. I mean, we could do it as a case statement, but I've just done it like this as a cond. All right, we're passing the test, and we know that four is going to be kind of different because we can already see that we're doing these i things. So what I'm going to do is refactor now. We have passing tests. It's time to refactor. And um, I'm going to do repeat and i like that. That should still pass. Okay, so we've gotten rid of that duplication for the one to three case. So let's do that, save that. Okay, failure again. So we're gonna go back to the cond. It's equal to four, then we're going to return IV else. Okay, we're good. Let's get the five going. Okay, equals 5n v. Okay, that's good. Still, I don't know if there's any real duplication to remove here. It's kind of hard to see. So let's do the next one. So that failed. This is just the simplest change that will make this one work. Oops, equals six, all right. And, all right, and we can do seven. And I'm gonna do eight too, just to make it faster. Equals seven n vii equals eight n vii. Now, I like TDD for the reason that it does get these very simple solutions with a lot of quick wins. Uh, if I were to sit down and think about how to solve this problem, I probably wouldn't do it, I wouldn't solve it in the same way. 
Um, but of course, then I probably wouldn't know enough about Roman numerals on my own to actually be able to solve it in my head at all. And I'd probably miss some cases. So this is the kind of thing, it's like a little tedious little problem that has a lot of cases and stuff. It's perfect for TDD. Okay, so the first thing we see that is duplicated is this V at the beginning of these four things. And so we might think maybe we could get rid of that V and then add the I's on. And in fact, we have the I's here, so maybe we can use those two. But first, let me just get rid of the V. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say something like this. All right. Right. So the other problem is we have all these different return values, right? So before we were just having, you can return this, you can return this, you can return this, and you can return this, etc. Um, but if we're going to be reusing this I thing, uh, we should actually not have a single, not have multiple return places. We should have a single one, right? So let's convert this to having a single return value. So to have a single return value, really what you're going to do is have the result in a let or something like that, and then we're going to return the result. Now, I know that's kind of like cheesy, it doesn't really make much difference, but we're refactoring right now. Okay. Now, it also seems like what we are looking at is like phases, I guess. So the phase will be first see if there's a 5, if it's greater than or equal to 5. And then if it is, go to your second phase, which is adding the i's. And then we'll have this other case, like a 4, where you know, if it's not equal to five, if it's if it's four, we have this special case, and then otherwise we're gonna fall back down to the second phase again. Okay, so let's think about it like phases for now. So we can do result first phase, and it's gonna be easy um, if, Uh, greater than if n is greater than or equal to five sorry greater than or equal to five then we are going to return a v otherwise we return empty okay and so now we have this thing where and then we have like a remaining it's going to be wait I needed an n in here sorry if n is greater than or equal to five and then we're going to subtract out 5 from our remaining. Okay, the test failed. That's okay. We're not done yet. Uh, all right. And so now I'm just moving this over here. Instead of having results, we're going to do this cond, except we don't need these anymore. We shouldn't, at least. We're going to have if remaining equals 4, return 4, else apply stir to result first phase, and we're going to repeat remaining. Ooh, we still have some test failures. So, trying to see what happened here. The four, no, it shouldn't be remaining, should it? Because then, right, okay. So what, what happened is we're subtracting five from n unconditionally. So we should only do it 
here. So what we need to do is do it in the same if statement. And it's going to return v and minus n five, and then here it's going to return n. Okay, so we got zero failures now, and the code is a little better. It's not a big case statement, right? Now let's go. Let's do more. Uh, so we got up to eight. Let's do a nine. And a 10, just for speed, I'm gonna, oh, what happened? Oh, right, because I have extra. There. All right, so we've got two failures. We don't have nine and 10 case, but we can put those in. So the thing is, now we've got this thing where we're doing n greater than or equal to five, and we, what we don't have is the, the 10 in there. So the 10 will be greater than 5, so we don't want to add a V, so we got to do it before, okay? So we're going to have result uh, 0 phase, I guess, because I called that one first phase, and remaining. Yeah, let's call that, yeah, let's call that remaining. All right, so we're going to do a similar thing if greater than or equal to n 10, we're going to output an x, because we know an 11 is coming, right? Um, actually, we could start even simpler than that. Sorry about that. Um, we could do if, we'll just copy this, if equals 9 n then we're going to output um, i x. Otherwise, we're going to do that. So that should get the 9 done. OK, now the 10 is going to be a very similar bit of code to this. So I'm going to copy it. So we're going to do let first phase remaining, except it should be 10, 10, and that should be an x. And then we need to not look at n here, but we need to look at remaining, because that's what we called it up here, right? We're looking at this as like a new phase. Let requires an even number of forms. Oops, I put there. Zero failures, nine errors. Oh my. Null pointer exception. Right, I called it result first phase. Wait a second, null pointer exception, where is that? 13, line 13. So why shouldn't remaining be? Oh, I have it too nested, that's the problem. There we go. Okay, one failure. Right, so we're still not getting that x through and I see why it's because we actually need to append our result first phase this one this result first phase here okay now I'm doing it in a TDD way so I don't even know you know if this is a simple way to do it this is how I would think about it after reading another Java version of it Okay, so now, okay, we're back. We ran a test, 10 assertions, zero errors or failures. So I want to point out the duplication here. And, and at the same time, point out the technique that I used, the pattern. You see, the pattern was I had two things to calculate. The 
you know, sort of the x and the next value of n, right, the remaining. And if we look at the code here, you can see that they did something very similar, which is that they have the result that they're keeping track of, which starts empty, and they have the remaining. And they need to calculate both. So they calculate the remaining here, and then also in this append Roman numerals function, which is defined somewhere here, they're actually appending to it. Okay, so that's what this is. This is the thing to append, and then this is the remaining. Okay, so we're calculating both. We're doing the same thing. We're just doing it in a non-mutable state way. These locals are not mutable, so we're just defining them up here. And in fact, we could use the same names that we had before. Okay, so that's, that's the technique. But it's a lot of duplication. We see that. We see that we got a 10 here, but a 5 here. And we've got an X here, but a V here. Right? And so let's turn this into more duplication so that we can see it even more clearly. So I'm going to call this remaining. And so that'll call that means I need to call this remaining. I need to call this remaining. I need to call this rem no, that shouldn't be remaining. That should be nine. Um this should be remaining. Right, so now I think that's wrong. If I go to 19, I think I've just broken it for 19. So I'm going to want to make a test before I continue here. Wait, sorry. The test for 19 should be... XIX. If I remember my Roman numerals... From my time in the in the Senate, the Roman Senate. All right, yes, I put it there. So what I'm going to do is say it is str uh, result first phase ix. All right, that passes. And 14 also because of this special case. So let's. Oops, that's the wrong one. Let's go down here. I'm used to switching files, not doing my code in the same file. So the reason I'm doing that is it was just incidental that it worked. It didn't work in general for all the cases. So I just want to make sure that works. So I'm going to do result first phase here. And oops, result first phase. There we go. And now we have a very um, duplicating thing which is very clear although here we could even we could do one more step of duplication I think and do a let oops do a let up here just to make even the like every little bit be um, duplicative there so we're gonna this is the initial value and so we're even using it here so this one is the same as this one and then this one should be result first phase so that it's the same so we see that this is the same code except we swap a 10 for the 5 and we still swap the X for the V okay now when you have this nested thing, we can imagine right now, well what about at 50, and what about at 100, and what about at 500? We'd just be adding more lets. It means it's a loop. It's a nested loop. It's going down more and more like that. So let's do that. Let's add the, let's make this a loop. Okay, so I'm going to use this outer let to turn it into a loop. I know I'm going in these very tiny steps, right? This, this is a, this is actually I think this is kind of a hard kata even in 
um, in what's it called? Oh, I shouldn't have deleted that. In imperative programming, I think that this one isn't so easy to get to this solution. So we're going to make it a loop. We're going to do remaining starts at remaining. So we're initializing two variables that we'll have in the loop. Now, whenever we do a loop, this is a recursion. This is this is its iteration, but it it looks structurally like recursion. So we're going to have to come up with a base case. The base case is identical to the the case where you stop here. Right? So they're going through this list of values. So we're going to have to go make that list of values. They're 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 doing data oriented programming. They're taking what used to be like an if statement and the hard coded values in an if and putting them into data. So we're going to call these Romans. And instead of two lists, I'm going to use a nested list because it's a lot easier to write in Clojure than to write than in than it is in Java. Uh, so I'm going to put the value 10x like that. And then 9 is ix. And then 5, and I'm putting them in order on purpose. 5 is v. 4 is iv. And then one is I. Okay, so that's basically all of the letters that I have in here. I'm moving them up here and associating them. So this X is associated with the 10. So I'm putting it with that 10. Okay, so now I can move all of that logic into a single loop instead of this big nested if, right? And this turns out to be the same as this one. If you look at it like that right um, so let's do that and get rid of that line right there and we also have to go through this list so I'm going to do Romans starts at Romans like that so we're going to stop when do we stop I think we stop when remaining is done. If zero remaining, then we're going to do str apply str remaining. No, not remaining, result. So let's change the name of that right now because it's too it's not the first phase anymore. All right. So that means that if we pass it in zero we're going to get an empty string but the romans didn't have a zero there's no test for it so um we'll just we'll just assume that that's an error case you shouldn't do it all right so now we have to take this code and turn it into code that will that will do all these little calculations in here so we're going to destructure the Romans thing. So we're going to have a, a V and a, an S. That will be our symbol. Okay, now we have another case here where what if we don't have any? Let's, let's do that. If empty Romans, well, we still have some left, but I don't know what to add on. Let's just... Um, So like what they do here is when they run out of remaining, they don't, they just stop. Or when they run out of, sorry, when they run out of values, they just stop. Let's look at the final thing. Right, so they just loop through the values and then they do this append Roman numerals. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so we have a nested if here. Now, in the case where we do have Romans, we're going to do this destructure. Um, sorry, I did this wrong. We have vs and the rest. 
Okay, so we're taking that first one. So like the first time through, it'll be 10 and x as v and s. And then the rest will be all the 9 through 1. Okay, now we're going to use this code here. So if remaining is greater than or equal to that value, then we are going to uh, append, let's say cons result. Wait. Okay, I'm sorry, I messed up. I put made this a string before. Should be a vector because we're gonna conj on to the end of it. Um, but if we so if we have the if we have if it's greater than that we're going to conj s the symbol onto the result and we're going to subtract v from that. Otherwise, we're going to just continue. So I'm going to turn this into a recur. Okay, so the recur, this is, this is going to be an interesting uh, lesson if you haven't seen something like this before. So the new value of result is going to be this. So see, we have these three things that are arguments to the loop. We have the result, the remaining, and the Romans, and we have their initial values. Okay, let me make it a little more clear by doing this. Okay, now we're going to call the loop again recursively with a new value for results. So we're adding s on to the end because it's a vector. We are subtracting v from the remaining and we're going to use the same value of Romans because we might want to try whatever number it is again. Okay, so in the case where we don't have, um, if, if we aren't greater than V, then we're going to do, we're just going to pass in, we're just going to skip that number. So we're just going to pass result in unchanged. We're going to pass remaining in unchanged. But because we've just checked it's not greater than V, we're going to move on to the rest of the Romans. Okay, and then at some point we either run out of Romans, which will get us here, or we will hit zero. Okay, so I'm going to delete this old code. And there, we pass all of our tests. Okay, I'm going to step through this one more time just to explain everything that's going on. So we're using a loop. And a loop lets you hold state in each iteration of the loop. So we're initializing this state with these values. So we're starting with the empty vector. That's important that it's a vector. We are then starting with this value, which I'm going to call it n again, because that's more clear. Um, and then we're starting with Romans, which are these. Okay, so each time through the loop, any of these can change. All three can change, just one of them can change. All right, so that lets us be very flexible. So we can kind of like loop through our remaining first and then loop through the Romans or, you know, however we want. But we have this base case. If we're getting, if we're at zero, meaning we've subtracted all the values out already, then we just apply string to result. So we've been grouping them all as strings. Now let's concatenate them all together. I don't know if that's the most efficient way to do it because we're storing them in vectors. Maybe it is better to just make strings with that. I don't know. But um, that's how I did it. And there you go. Maybe we could try a different way and see if it's more efficient. Who knows? Okay. Uh, you could also do a string builder if you really wanted to. Um, but I, I tend to avoid mutation if possible. Okay, so then the other case is we ran out of Romans. And I don't think this is going to happen ever. 
But just in case we have a way to do it, maybe you could throw an exception. Like, whoa, this is a weird number. I don't know how to calculate it. You know, something like that. Okay, uh, then we're going to go through, um, what I mean is I don't think any of our tests would ever throw, would ever get here. That's what I mean by that. Okay, so in, in this final case, we're going to take the first pair from Romans. So that's the V and the S. And so that's going to be one of these things, a V and an S. And we're going to um, check if the remaining is greater than or equal to the V. If it is, we're going to start the loop again. So we're going to iterate with adding uh, the symbol to the end, because that's what conj does on a vector. It's going to add it to the end of the result. Um, and it's also going to subtract V from the remaining, so you don't add it again the next time through. And then it's going to use the same Romans. So it's not, it's not using this. It's using the same thing that got here, so it's going to be this one the one at the, the head of the loop. And so that means you'll be using, uh, you'll try again on the same one, right? In case like you have 20, it's gonna be XX. So the first time through it'll do X, and the second time through it'll add another X. Okay, now this one is going to just leave everything the same except it's using the rest here. Right, it's using the it's it's dropping that first one when it when it does the loop. There you go. I don't know if this is the you know we it, to simplify. I might get rid of this. And just say we're never going to run out of Romans. Um, if you do, I don't know what would happen if you run out of Romans. It might like go into a null pointer exception or something. But it works, and we can try some new stuff like is equal to, let's see, what is 100? 100 is C, and then 20. Okay, so 2 Roman 120. Of course, that's not going to work because we don't have that programmed in, but we can put it in. 100 is C. Oh, we should put oh, C. We should put in 50 too. 50 is L. Okay, now it passes. See, so we've we've moved. This is a very interesting Java program too because it's data oriented. The only thing we have to do now, now that we have this program, the only thing we have to do is add new Roman numeral values and symbol to this list, and it keeps expanding and gets more and more, um, handles more and more cases. All right, so that has been my attempt at solving this. Um, I know I, I tried to do it very step by step so that I wouldn't um, do anything too advanced in one step. And I hope it didn't make it seem like it was very convoluted and, and the wrong way to do it or like that closure is very complicated. Because as you can see, the code in the end is not long. It's actually pretty straightforward. And um, I'm sure you could do it. You could figure this out yourself. But I just wanted to show the like kind of step by step, like look at all the duplication that we're creating that is obviously should be a loop because it's like nested ifs. Um, well, there you go. I, I hope this helps.